we really need people who are thinking and reasoning you know we are not able to generate that uh, we have very good uh, um, percentage of uh, passing out in HSLC and HSSLC mm. uh, that's uh, a, a very commendable, jo commendable job mm. but um, we feel on our part as teachers to produce thinking and reasoning people <laughs> that's where <laughs> we are feeling mm. so uh, we really need to work on it and uh, many schools are trying to do that so the only difference between a good school and a poor school would be in, in the days to come equipping them to make use of information thinking because today we don't need textbooks to get information exactly. information is everywhere so how do we equip our children to choose the right information and make use of it is going to be very crucial a and that's where we are still struggling but uh, in, in time I think we will be able to come out with something where we generate thinking and reasoning people exactly. by the time they reach class 10 we almost kill all their thinking and reasoning capabilities mm -hmm. <laughs> Memorizing. And then they, they keep on memorizing and then somehow, mm. you know, it's it's easy to keep on drilling and drilling and drilling and then making someone uh, pass out in, in an examination. Mm. Uh, and that's the easier part actually. Mm. To make someone think and reason, uh, the exercise is longer, the process is longer. <laughs> mm. There's I mean, a disconnect yes. between <laughs> the learning outcomes that the NCRT sets for children and the kind of competitive the stiff competition that we have at the competitive level of examinations like the pmt or the joint entrance examination or any any civil examination that you see the amount of hard work that the students are required to put in in order to get through those exams is such it's full of pressure and the learning outcomes that is expected from children as per ncrt is very low again and so there's a disconnect also. So uh, there's so many things that needs to be streamlined. That's yeah. Yeah. That's These are very important. Yeah. Very yeah. important issues. Let me say 20 important. years ago, when I joined government school, only third, third class students used to come. <laughs> now, uh, last year, let us say even in Dimapur, only mm. first divisioners yeah. got That's admission. Exactly. So now mm. it depends on the raw materials. It is not only the teachers. Yeah. But uh, you see, as you talk about better result in higher secondary, because now you see that most of the higher secondary also located in a district headquarters, and most of the good students are also joining uh, yeah. that kind of schools. So uh, when we talk about uh, the negative points of uh, uh, so-called uh, government schools, it depends on the raw materials. The, uh, you see, when we send our children, government school <laughs> let him try it in government school so even uh, you see parents also just for a trial they are least bothered just throw it into the government schools and when they you know they are paying a very high fees in a private school that is why they give more attention so the, uh, we should not just see into one area but we have to see because when we manufacture anything you know the quality depends on the product and the raw materials but this mindset Machine. this mindset i think is a very sad uh, one thing is yeah yeah a uh, mindset that uh, when we talk of government schools we thought that is a school for the poor people that's the first thing <laughs> i really don't like this one exactly i also started from the lp schools and government schools and everything and there are there are my my colleagues who studied in the you know very high profile schools and all but uh, it's not that we're better, but some, in many areas we defeated them, in, in many sectors. Exactly. So I don't know how we are going to remove this, this mindset that government school is considered for economically, you know, marginalized section of people. Mm. How it is happening? And this itself first, we have, we have this mindset has, you know, instilled yeah. into the minds of our children. They feel that inferior kind of you know environment in the educational arena when i'm asked to speak in some college events like uh, certain topics and uh, some kind of events uh, i was always thus when i start sharing with the students mm -hmm. and even if you go to the lower you know the students i think our children really they were not properly given something 
in the higher classes actually that is in the college does i do speak but uh, even there they have a very serious thinking when i start talking about the social political issue and whatever other things unfortunately out of 100 even one person is not uh, is not aware of what is happening yeah. so when we started telling many things they are really true they are really there is an interest huge interest that they want to learn something more so sometimes i feel that experts in many areas mm. they should be calling yeah. just uh, you know have a kind of discussion interactive sessions with the mm. students different topics and that will really huge motivation will be there i don't know that is what i feel because this is my own experience i mean yeah. through interaction of different students at different schools colleges and something like that. Mm. Uh, many people look at uh, running a school as a business enterprise yes but if we really look into it there's nothing much left at the end of the year because um, education is very expensive uh, right from the furniture that you have to provide to small small facilities because when you are planning for a, for an event you have to think for at least five six hundred people every time the expenditure is is multiplied with that number and so it's an expensive affair and when a school is charging a huge amount uh, i'm sure it is going to the s teacher's salary or to to the kind of facility consider buying a small toy in a playroom you buy it today the next day uh, especially the boys the next day it gets spoiled and you have to replenish that <laughs> you know <laughs> expenditures are always there no as and you, as if you want to provide a bigger avenue to them let's say you want to take them to to a tour you know you you spend money on travel you spend money on see money just goes like that but the kind of exposure that they get get is again uh, if you think of it it's worth the money so um, we are running on a very bare minimum fees actually if you we, we think of many big ideas but we are controlled by the fact that we can't charge that much on our parents <laughs>